Hey wood turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. If I had three of these, I'd probably be able to juggle them and every 10 seconds or so bend over and pick one back up. Well, I think it's time for us to have a ball. I really mean it. Let's have a ball. A lot of guys will need one of these for a project. Well, there are ways to go about it by making the cuts and using a template. But the folks at Carter recently put out a perfect spear machine. And it turns a perfect ball. Really does. And it does it pretty simply. So if you got a minute, I want to show you how this thing works. Then you can decide whether you want one. But you know the deal. All you got to do, and you got to do it now, is watch. In order to get this thing started, we have to have some stock. And have to be holding it in a jawed chuck. Now, that's not exactly true. This could be on a faceplate, bolted through a faceplate. Uh, there are several ways to hold this block in order to turn it. But if there's vibration in it, you won't be able to go around the outside with it sticking out freehand. Okay. Now, what I did, I put it between centers, and I knocked it down. And this is some trashy wood. You can see how it's split out and has chewed up a little bit. The end broke off. This is a good piece for me to show you how this piece works. Why? Essentially, if I pick the perfect piece and did it, you wouldn't understand just how tricky, finicky, difficult this thing can really be. So, we're going to go with this piece. Right now, we just have a straight sleeve. What I'm going to do is drop my tool rest down a little bit, take a gouge, knock the corners off. I have set a width. See this line? Well, you can't see it. I got a line here and a line here. That's going to be about the width of the ball I'm going to turn. It's a little bit bigger, but that's what I'm going to start out with. I'm going to knock the corners off this because the gizmo doesn't really do that very well. This is where you say, wait, if you're doing this, why do we need a jig? I don't know. Why did we go funny color on it? Let me stop and I gotta start up again. Apparently one of my patch cords is going bad. good enough wood turner that I can do this spear with the template pretty damn quick. Why? Because this will cut where I drive it with the edge. Now that I have this thing kind of knocked down a little bit in a weird position, I'm going to go get the rig. Let's talk about the rig. This is Carter's Perfect Spear Rig. 300 plus dollars. Okay? It's held into your ways by this rig underneath here. See it? You set those to match your ways. Then you drop it down in here. And you need to have this bolt in the center of the spear you want to turn. Mine, when I marked it and measured out, looks like 11 and 3 quarter inches. Okay? So I'm going to turn that. That's that keeper underneath. And then I'm going to snug this up for the 11 and 3 quarter inch dimension. That's got to be tight. It's a source of vibration. Next is, see all this head? Let me explain to you some of it. 
this is a riser post. It's got a collar that once you set this to run dead center, the cutter, your cutting surface to be dead center of your spur, then you set it in the right place, you put the collar in, you tighten it down. Then you have this. This carries the cutting rake. A collar, the hole in it. This has got the bar, the cutter, a knob, a knob, a knob, okay? A couple of things I've come not to like about it. The knob, the knob, the knob. Okay? They vibrate loose. Loose vibration, not a happy thing. So, I'm going to try to fix that right now. What I've done, I've replaced them with levers. See this lever? I can put some meat and potatoes on it, tighten it down. This one too, because this is vibration in a cutter. This is side to side. Sometimes it comes in good to have the side to side to clean up, and I'll show you that. But I don't need the constant vibration when it comes loose. Here's the other part. These are the cheapest knobs you can buy in the catalog and at a tool company. I make tools. I know what the cheapest are. That's it. Well, you can add a thumb screw to it, but that's the cheapest. So, I put something on it I can bear down on and put some muscle behind it. And I keep all these levers and gizmos when I'm playing with stuff around the shop. So, now another one. They put this pin down here. This pin lets you get dead center. Doesn't do a whole lot except help you find the center of your piece. And that way you can work from it. Right now it is telling me that I'm about a quarter inch too close to the headstock to get the cut I want. So, I can... Loosen this up a little bit and slide it over just a little bitty bit. I, ha I have it back in straight. I have this cutting pretty square to the headstock. And how it was off was I had tightened this down that it was a little bit crooked. And that's easy to fix. We will go here, loosen this up, bring it around. Tighten it down. Now, let, let's go over what happens here. When I swing this base, that cutter goes in an arc across that piece. This knob loosens up this cutter bar. This knob advances it forward. That makes contact, etc., etc., and that's what happens. Okay? I think I can get you in a little bit better position. Hold on for the ride. Let's get that out the way because it's distracting. As I said earlier, I could pick a sweet piece of maple. This will slice like candy. But, you don't always make it out of maple. If I was making a croquet set, I would make it out of mahogany. And that's what this is. We're going to make contact with the cutter. Watch it. Let me show you. Contact. See that? Lock this knob back here, and then we're going to swing this head. And that's a crappy piece of what I was warning you about. I still want to show this right to you, and I'm still going to make this cut. Okay? It's just not as simple as I thought it would be. And I don't have any really nice maple or anything out there to do this out of. I'm heading to SWAT this week and I'll pick up some new lumber. Move the cutter out. See how simple it is to make a cut? back to dead center. Advance the cutter a little bit. Light cuts. The last 
last time I demonstrated this, I fought the looseness of it the entire time. Why I need hit in there? That was dead, dead meat on the last dead block. It's coming into it. We'll make a croquet set. Make a ball you can decorate up here. Tip of a uh, bed finial. That's why you need it dead that cutter to be dead center of the of the center point of the lathe. So you can clean that cut up. Alright, all the way around. Now I could remove more of this. This is where that pivoting head comes in at. Let me back you out a little bit and explain to you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna loosen this. And then I'm gonna pivot. I'm sorry, not that. I'm going to loosen this and pivot this head. And this one's cut. Just like a mic hunter tool. center again, which is where my perfect cut was, and continue. Continue to ball until my chuck gets in my way. Not that I can do past that. What I would do now is take my tool rest, bring the tool rest up, and finish it off a little bit oversized and then take it and put it between centers and knock the tip off. Just so you understand, $300 gadget turns out perfect spears. Now, there is a way to hollow with it. I'm still playing with that because the instruction book refers to hollowing at a point, but doesn't explain how to hollow with it. But if it moves in an arc that's controllable, I can hollow with it. I can get there. I just got to play with it to get there. Otherwise, I'm kind of having a little ball with that. Now look at look at the, the quilting in that. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Yeah. Nobody tell Pruitt up at Capital Area Wood Turners, I got this. Um, this maple. He really believes that I used it for a spacing block to hold some toolboxes up in my car. <laughs> Which is okay by me. So, If you get a chance to check one out at one of the trade shows, check it out. If you do a lot of spears, buy one. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure you can get real close with it with traditional tools. And remember, if I had a third one, I'd be juggling them right now. This very minute. Alright. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and thanks for joining me today, briefly, as we were making shavings. You take care, be good.
Hey, Captain Eddie, one more time. The changes I made to that rig, changing those knobs and levers, and the adjustments I made, are no way recommended, guaranteed, warranted, or anything else by the makers of the tool. It's just changes I thought would make it run a little bit better and work a little nicer. And from what I did yesterday, where I had a constant vibration from the lower adjustment knob and some vibration from the upper adjustment knob, I got rid of both of those problems by changing those levers. Those levers are available at MSC Direct or at Granger.com. Both are catalog services and both have levers, knobs, and all that. Now, I buy parts and pieces to do jigs around the shop all the time and that's where I go to get these parts. So I saw an opportunity to kind of do a little fine tuning and I did just that. Okay? Now let's talk about Freedom Pens. You do know about Freedom Pens. Freedom Pens is when you, the wood turner, make pens for our troops. If you're not into the Freedom Pen program, and you'd like to be, all you have to do is email me at this address right here. Email me at eddiecastlinacox.net and tell me you want to spend some free defense for our troops. That's all it takes. I will put you in touch with Sarge Joe Kelly and he will take care of the situation from there on out. He'll tell you what the cost is to buy the kits. You can't get them anywhere else cheaper. He'll tell you how to turn the pens, why you turn the pens. He'll tug at your heart. He will and he will get you set up to turn Freedom Pens. Again, if you're interested, email me at this address. Don't go to anybody's website or a blog or a forum or anything else open for the answers. The answers are here at eddiecastlin at cox.net. Alright? Freedom Pens, it makes a 